This is a chocolate tiramisu tart. I've done tiramisu versions before, but this is a little bit different. I like this version. Now, in this pot, I have melted one half a cup of butter, which is a stick. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla to it and one tablespoon of coffee liqueur. And then just blend that up real quick. Great. In my bowl, I've got one and one half cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt, quarter cup of confectioner sugar, and a quarter of a cup of a very good cocoa. And I'll just give that an initial stir around. Very simple so far. Now we're going to go oops, onto the mixer, and I'm going to add the butter mixture. And just blend it until it all comes together. That's all it takes. You could have done this by hand if you wanted to in the bowl, but why? It's just so much faster this way. Let's clean off my paddle. All right, and then in front of me I have a nine inch tart pan with a removable bottom. It's a round one, it's a nine inch diameter. If you don't have one of these, you can use a nine inch spring form pan also. Um, again, if you don't have that, then you could just use a regular pie plate and you just won't unmold it. So I'm going to just spray it lightly. And now I'm going to get all my tart stuff in there. Just dump it all in. And then with your hands, just start working it on the bottom and then up the sides. And a good tool for this is another measuring cup then you can just press it up the sides. And just, you know, play with it until you get it all in there. And I have an oven on at 375 degrees. And we're going to bake this tart without the filling. Just going to put it in that 375 degree oven for about nine minutes. And then after the nine minutes, I'm going to take a look at it. And if it looks like the middle is starting to puff, then take a fork and just jab the bottom of it and that'll bring the crust down and then put it back in the oven for another, oh, about two or three minutes, just until it's set. Then we'll take it out and we'll let it cool before we go ahead with the second part of the recipe. And right, give it one more turn around, just to make sure there's no big holes. Okay, now into my oven, 375, about nine minutes. Our crust is out of the oven and it's very, very warm. So I'm gonna just put it off to the side to cool for a moment. Now, I'm gonna make two more layers that go on top of here. This is going to be a solid chocolate layer and then we're gonna go with the cheese layer. So in a small pan, I have three quarters of a cup of heavy cream and one tablespoon of light corn syrup. 
That gives it a little bit of a shine. Now I'm going to take this over to the stove and I'm going to put this on the stove until it just almost comes to a boil. And then I'll come back and we'll finish this part. Okay, our cream is nice and warm. I'm going to pour it over the chocolate. And at the same time, I'm putting in one tablespoon of butter that I cut up so it'll melt faster, and one tablespoon of chocolate of uh, coffee liqueur. And now I'm just going to mix it until it's well blended and all melted. All right, nice and smooth. Pour some in. I'm not quite using all of it. I think it'll be too much. I'm just giving it a glaze up the sides. And now I'm going to put this in the refrigerator until this is hard and set. And then we can proceed with the last phase, which is the cheese topping. Let's make the filling for the tiramisu tart. So I have in my, I'm going to put in my mixer bowl one cup of mascarpone cheese. And as you can see, it's rather thick, so we need to lighten it up a little. Come on, get out of there. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of confectioner sugar, one tablespoon of coffee, of coffee liqueur, yes, and one tablespoon of coffee, just black coffee. And we're going to give that a little mix just to get that cheese softened up and all those other flavors blended in. And give it a little scrape down the sides. All the coffee liqueur and the coffee went flying up the sides. and clean this off. You can see it's already lightened up quite a bit. Good. Put that off to the side for a moment. Now in a small bowl, I've got three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream. And instead of doing it on the mixer, I'm going to do it with my old egg beater. And what I want to do is just get this until soft peaks. By the way, you could have done this with a handheld mixer or an immersion blender, but I just like this. It's fun. falling over. All right, now I'm going to add this to this. I'm going to leave it in the big bowl. It's just easier for me to fold. And to it, I'm going to add uh, two ounces of chopped, finely chopped chocolate. And I used a chocolate bar, semi-sweet chocolate bar, 
and a serrated knife. It's much easier to grate it all up. Just dump that in and now fold the two together. Don't mix it too hard because you don't want to deflate that little bit of air that you got into the cream. It's pretty well blended. Okay, now here's our tart with that other chocolate filling. And I'm going to put this on top. Even it out. My chocolate is not 100% set on the bottom, but that's okay because now we're going to put this in the refrigerator for a few hours. Just be careful. Then you won't, it doesn't matter if the chocolate underneath got a little mixed in. If you want to take a longer time and wait until that chocolate sets completely, you can. Okay. Now I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator for a few hours and I'm just going to show you, as soon as I put this in the refrigerator, I'm going to show you how to make some chocolate curls that's very easy and it will decorate the top of this later and it's a lot of fun to make. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator, let me come right back. Let's have some fun and make some chocolate curls to decorate our tart. I have a bowl here, a microwave safe bowl, and in it I have three ounces of semi-sweet chocolate bits and one tablespoon of shortening. I'm going to take this over to the microwave, and all microwaves are different, so you're just going to have to go by this. I'm going to put it in for about 40 seconds. If I were you and you're not sure, start it around 25 or 30 and do it in 10 second intervals until I can make it nice and smooth by stirring it with a fork, so let me do that. All right, I think this will be about it. I started it at 40. It wasn't quite ready. I put it in for another 15 seconds, and here it is. So 55 seconds in my microwave. Now what you want to have ready is some sort of a surface to spread it on. And I like spreading it on the back of a baking pan. This is a small one. You can do it on a large one if you don't have these small baking pans. But I like this size. I can do so many things with it. Okay, so there we go. Now, just dump it on there. And then with an offset or some sort of a spatula, just spread it thinly as you can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the freezer for maybe three minutes. And then we're going to take it out. It, it, you don't want it frozen solid because you won't be able to make good curls. They will just uh, crack on you. I got a couple of pieces of shortening in there. I hope that doesn't screw me up. But we'll see. It's nice and thin. Make sure it's not like one big thickness in the middle and thin on the edges. Get that piece of, like I said, a little piece of shortening was there. I don't want that in there. Okay, now into the freezer for about three minutes. We 
here's my pan out of the freezer. It was more like five minutes. You can see I made some test runs by running my um, spatula over there just to see if they would curl. And now, there's one curl. There's two. And you can make these any size you want. If you want to make them, I'm making them fairly small. You can just keep rolling and rolling, make big fat ones. But you can see when it gets to that, what I call the magic moment, they really curl beautifully. Like I said, mine took about five minutes. I started testing at three. And these will look really pretty on a cake. Now, you, if you had made them on a bigger sheet pan, you would have obviously doubled the amount of chocolate and shortening. Um, here's a nice big fatty. <laughs> and then you could, you could cover a whole cake on the outside, just frost in chocolate or vanilla, and then just the whole top and sides could be chocolate curls. It's even better now, now that I've had it out. And if you go too far with the chocolate and it's really brittle, just take it out and leave it at room temperature and keep testing it until it gets warm enough. So there's my tray of chocolate curls into the refrigerator until I'm ready to decorate my tiramisu tart. Time to decorate our tiramisu tart. I have my chocolate curls that you saw me make and I have some more of that shaved or you know chopped up chocolate and I'm going to put some of that on. I mean, chocolate is chocolate. I love chocolate. Okay, put my big fat curl in the middle. And just, oh, here, there, everywhere. However you want to decorate it. Use up all the chocolate. And if someone doesn't like chocolate, then they shouldn't be eating this. Can I fit these in there somewhere? Maybe a little bit more. And there is our tiramisu tort, great for any party or guests.